Father in God, we bless you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for this wonderful day that you've made. This is the day that the Lord has made, that you may be glad and rejoice in it. Thank you because of the word that is coming forth to us, O oh God. I pray the Lord as we even partake of your word this morning, that Jehovah, you shall speak to us, O oh God, and that your word shall have an impact in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your word is ever true. May it correct us, may it rebuke us, may it mold us, O oh God, to that which you want us to be. We bless you, we honor you. Thank you even for your servant, O oh God, that you've anointed and that God you prepare this day that he may speak to us, O oh God. I pray that you may use him as a vessel to deliver what God you've put in his heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. And as you even see to listen from you, O oh God, I pray that you may give us a listening ear, O oh God, to your word, to the honor and glory of your holy name. We bless you and we honor you because you are good. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. My name is Jonathan Nyaga. Appeal of life. Be blessed. Praise the Lord. Buana Asifiwe. Tumsifu Bwana Yesu. Tumsifu Yesu. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Asifiwe Yesu. Amen. I was looking for a, a, a louder amen because uh, it's good to praise the Lord. When we say amen, we are actually saying let it be so. When I say praise the Lord, you say amen. You are saying, yes, let the Lord be praised. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord bless you. I'm grateful to God for this morning and this day he has given us that we may be together, that we may fellowship together. And I like the topic that we have today is actually about fellowshipping together. And God has given us this opportunity that we may fellowship together under the topic fellowship. I believe he's going to bless us. Thank you for coming. I know you'd, been, you'd, be, you'd have chosen to do other things. You'd have chosen to sit in the, in the room to sleep. You know, those who like movies to watch movies. Those who like football to watch football. At least to watch reviews of the World Cup. You would have chosen all those things. Or even to stroll around or visit somebody. But you chose to come here today. And God has taken note of that. That you came today. And I believe he's going to bless us all together. Amen. Yes, my name is Paul once again. And I love Jesus Christ as my Savior and as my Lord. I've been saved for some years. And I can promise you that you can depend on God. As in, you can trust and depend on Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. He is dependable. He is reliable. You can count on him in times of need, in times of abundance, in times of trouble, in times of joy. You can count on Christ Jesus. I can tell you that. Because I have seen it, I've experienced it through my own life. Praise the Lord. And I'm sure there are people here who, who have similar testimonies of how faithful our God is. So if you are here and you have not encountered this Lord, you have not tasted and seen that he is good, you have an opportunity today to experience 
the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He's a good Lord. Amen. And I promise you, he will not fail you. He will not fail you. We fail God many times, but we, he can never fail us. And you're welcome to know him. I have, I have three girls in my house. My wife and my two daughters. So they all said hi. Pokeni salam was my girls. Yeah. It's a good thing to get, to, to be married. If you're here and you have thought that uh, you cannot get married, can you change that mind? <laughs> Even if you've been frustrated by boys and girlfriends, just know, at least hear this from me, marriage is good. Marriage is good. Even if you come from a family where things have not been working, and I know there are those people, I have had testimonies. I also have my own testimony on that. What I have known out of my own experience in my marriage, marriage is good. Praise the Lord. And it's good because God started it. God cannot start something which is bad. Anybody saying marriage is bad, that's a liar. Na shinto kabisa. How can God start something that is bad? So welcome to marriage. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. They're talking about fellowship. Uh, I couldn't come with my girls, by the way, because it was a bit early, and it's not easy to prepare a whole family and uh, make it on time. So that's actually the main reason we didn't come together as we would have wanted to come. Let's read together in the book of Corinthians. You can give us First Corinthians chapter 12 uh, from verse 20. Or should we start from verse 12? I think so. We're going to read, it's quite a chunk, but we're going to read it. I, I want to believe that we're going to be blessed even as we read it. There are blessings that come by reading the Bible, just reading it. And so they are ours this morning as we read together. Are you, do you have an IV? I would prefer an IV. I hope this is an IV. Yeah, I think so. And I want us, all of us to read together. Amen? All of us, we can read from here so that we can flow in the same language. And we start now. We are going all the way to verse 20, to verse 30. All of us. Let's read together. One, two, read. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit into one body whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it will not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it will not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would be the body? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with a special honor. And the parts that are unrepresentable are treated with a special modesty. Well, our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, 
every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kind of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of hearing, healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but eagerly desire the greater gift. And now I will show you the most excellent way. Heavenly Father, behold your word, behold your people. Pray that you speak to us and bless us through your word. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. And this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When I thought about the topic of fellowship, I couldn't think about, about any other scripture that deals with the issue of fellowshipping as God intended than this scripture we just read. It's talking about the body. And Paul is using the analogy of the body to actually talk about the church. It's very important to note that. That Paul is not talking about the body. Or rather, the primary message is not about the body. The primary message is about the church of Jesus Christ. He's saying that if you look at, at, at verse 27, which looks like a conclusion of the argument he has been presenting so far. He says, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. So all this argument Paul is de 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 developing and describing all the way to that point was geared to or was pointing to that we are the body of Christ. So when he's talking about the eyes, and he's talking about the hand, when he's talking about the feet, the hearing, the smell, all those things Paul wants us to know and understand that we are like that in Christ. Praise the Lord. And maybe the question to ask ourselves is, who am I in the body of Christ? Who am I in the body of Christ? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. When I was looking for the meaning and definition of the word fellowship, this is what one dictionary said. It's a friendly association, especially with the people who share one interest, e.g., they value the fun and good fellowship as the cement of the community. That's the dictionary, and it has many other explanations which I may not need to go to. I defined it this way. This is the coming together of people, underscore that one. People, mainly for a common purpose, underscore that one, and reason. And it happens within a common location or place, underscore that one. So three things. Let me repeat. This is the coming together of people, mainly for a common purpose or reason, underscore, and happens within a common place or location. So you're going to look at those three, um, those three uh, nouns, people, uh, purpose, and place or location. Why people? It's because without people, there is nothing that you do which is meaningful. Without people. There are teams that have come here. The worship team came, they led us. The dance team came, they danced to us. We know they were dancing to the Lord. But they could have danced to the Lord in their rooms, right? Amapalenje. They would have done that, but they came here because we were here. The choir also sang. They would have sang in one of the lecture halls. But they came here this morning because we are here. People are very important. There is no fellowship without people. 
So if you're an MCCU member, one of the requirements which is not described, which is not stipulated, is that you must mingle with people. That is clear. Without people, there is no fellowship. That is why we ask CUs to register members so that we know when we, we call for, when we are expecting to have Sunday service, if I ask the CU chair, whom do you expect to come for the Sunday service? They can retrieve the membership sheet and tell me, these are our members. These are the people we expect to come for the Sunday service. Fellowships have to have people. People are important. You need people. This morning, somebody, I, I lifted a lady on the way, and we started talking about um, uh, her neighborhood. She happened to, have to be a neighbor to somebody, uh, a, a famous person in the country. And she was telling me how the, that person mingles so easily with the people in the village. And she mentioned that person would always go for barrios, you know, events in the village where people are contributing. He would allow his children to mingle with the children in the village. And that stood out that this lady, once she recognizes most about this famous character, is that he fellowships with the people in the village. That is how important fellowship is. There is no good way of putting it that you're a member of MCCU but you don't fellowship with others. I mean, that, that defeats the statement, I am a member of the fellowship. So you need people. We need people to be there, to sing, to dance, to lead Bible study, to lead various ministries, to participate in missions, to go out for those uh, uh, missions on campus and whatever activities that are there whatever we are doing we must do together when you organize for meetings the meetings are there because we have people so there can never be fellowship without people that means to me and to, and to you if I am not there right now I am not in my church and by the way I let my pastor or the assistant pastor always to know where I am every Sunday I am not in church like now they know where I am. Now I'm not in church. My, my absence in church is depriving my local church some aspect of the fellowship of the church. And that's why my absence in church needs to be explained. That's why I need to tell my pastor I am not in today because I am at MCC where I'll be speaking. That's cause for accountability, and we'll be going to discuss about that later. Praise the Lord. We need people because when people are many, they're able to do a lot together. I'm aware you're going for a mission. And I'm aware the mission is costing 1.6, something like that, or rather the budget. None of us in this room can deal with that kind of a mission alone. But because we come together, we are able to do that. We can, we can raise even two million. We can because we have come together. When people come together, they do wonders. The Bible talks about a scenario in the Old Testament. In the book of Genesis, I think chapter 11, the Tower of Babel, the people spoke one language and they have one intention. It moved God. God had to move from heaven, come down to scatter the, the plans they had because the plans were not good. But the Bible says with one voice, with one intention, no one could stop them. God had to come. When people are together, when people fellowship together, Things happen, and there's nothing that is impossible with the people who are united. Praise the Lord. So please be coming. Be part of this fellowship. Be part of the Bible study. 
be part of that ministry. Be part of that. Uh, if you are first year, I know there is answer fit. If you are finalist, I know there is book of fit. Whatever there is that requires your fellowship with others, be there. Because once you're not there, there is no fellowship. There is lunch hour meetings here, right? You do lunch hour. And I'm aware the lunch hour meetings are not doing so well. By the way, I'm the regional coordinator. So I understand what is going on in the region. So, I can tell one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why the lunch hours are not doing well is because people are not there. And therefore, the fellowship is not very strong. So you need to be there. We need to come together so that there is fellowship even in this ministry. Somebody tell me what time I should finish so that I don't uh, go too much. The best meal is the one which is, which is eaten with friends. My daughter is five years next month and she, she's not a good eater. She feeds poorly. But when there are children in the house and we put food to, for them to eat, we actually tell them, the one who finish number one, we are going to celebrate the person. And they eat. And my daughter will eat so that she can be number one. And that helps us. We are happy that there are other children to actually compete with my daughter so that my daughter can eat. The best meal is that which people eat together. When I was in campus, like you, some Sundays we just come together when we are not having events and activities. We come together and, and a, friends, a group of friends and we eat together. Actually, most of the times we do it in my house. We do lunch or dinner or both. So after service, like this one, we go to my house, a group of us, sometimes 10, 15, and then we fellowship, we cook chapatis, sometimes rice, and we eat, we drink, then we sit and pick a story. Those are some of the most memorable uh, times in my campus time. There's those Sunday afternoons when I had those fellowships with those guys. Right now, we are all married and happy families are mad, doing many things in this country and outside. A good meal or the best meal is when people eat together. And fellowship should also actually show how much you, have, you integrate, integrate yourself with the people. You are a good brother, you are a good sister, if you can maintain people around you. People around you. Don't be a lone ranger. Don't be too consumed with the heaven that nobody matters in this world. Except Jesus, whom we are going to. Even Jesus had 12 disciples who are always with him. He fellowshiped even among the 12. He had the three who were very tight to him. So who are you? You think you don't need people around you. You need people. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I know there is a lie of the social media. That in your Facebook you have you know, 2,000 friends. Let me tell you. In my mother tongue we say, more do you you. We say, the face, the face is the person. If you don't see the face of the person, forget. You don't have anybody around you. The social media is lying to us that you have 2,000 friends. Let me ask you. God forbid, if your cubicle caught fire, the 2,000 friends on your social media will come and rescue you. They cannot. Why? Because they are not there. You need people you can see, people you can call. And tell them, hey, I need you now. I have people, I have friends. And by the way, they are not many. I have friends. I can call them even at midnight. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And tell them, come now. And they hop into a vehicle. They Uber and they come to my place. Every one of us need that kind of a fellowship. A people you can count on. 
for your life at any moment because you fellowship well with them. Praise the Lord. Because you are heavenly bound of no value in this world. The only people you engage with are demons when you are chasing them. <laughs> my, bro my brother, my, my sister, you need people. Hang around people. Make sure you have some good friends around you. People you can call in that very bad hour and they come. And those friends, you meet them in this church, in that ministry, in that fellowship, in that Bible study. That is where you meet them. That's where you build relationships. Some of you have heard me say that I found my wife. Found is the word. Somebody told me, you can never choose your wife. You only find your wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a mystery. <laughs> the reason is because God is the one who chooses for us our spouses. We have nothing to do about it. Ours is only to find where is the person God has chosen for me. In fact, the Bible says, you find a wife, you find a wife. You who finds a wife. So I found my wife in a Bible study. Who oh, unto you? <laughs> you know, if God ordained that your wife is in the Bible study and you don't show up in the Bible study, whom are you going to marry? <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we have talked about there must be a common purpose or reason. People fellowship for a reason. Like we're here today because of the Sunday service, right? And by the way, sometimes the reason or the purpose is so unconscious. We are so unconscious about it to a point we even don't know or even remember that it exists. But it's there. There is no fellowship, not one, not one without a reason. Some good reasons, some bad reasons. Like now, men are fellowshipping a lot in front of screens watching football. And, they, and you know, those of you who love football, how are you people? Footballers, lovers of football, how, where are you? I'm one of you, by the way. Of course, Africa, we are not doing so well. May the Lord remember us. <laughs> when people are watching football, they actually fellowship. They don't know each other. But they will talk about this, that, that, that pass. They will talk about that, uh, that uh, substitution. Ah, that's, an, that's an awful substitution. How can, they, how can that coach re remove so and so and the way he's, he's critical? I mean, look at this guy. These people, do they understand this game? People, people are watching football. They actually know better than the coach of the team. <laughs> they fellowship a lot. Every fellowship, there is a reason and a purpose. And actually, that reason, that purpose should be the one that drives you to go and attend those meetings. When I was in campus, <clears throat> I would not miss service like this one. I could not. The idea of missing service never existed in my life. Never. That I'm, I'm in campus and I'm not in service. That idea was never there. It also applied in my, my classes. I would not miss classes. Unless I, I remember twice. We went for missions and we came very tired. I slept and overslept. And the class was early in the morning. I think the second time I was not feeling well. Those are only two times I remember I missed classes. Can I tell you why? I understand why I understood why I was going to the service, why I was going to that class. You know, I had, I had come to the university by faith. You had a school in Deista. They say you study there if you have a lot of money or you have a lot of faith in God. Me, I had the latter. 
So when God provided, how could I then fail to go to that class that costed God so much for me to be in that class? That was the reason why I, was, I could not miss class. I could not miss service because I was wondering, what would I be doing in the house when people are worshipping God who has brought me this far? How would God look at me in the house and the service where people are worshipping him is going on? The reason and the purpose of the fellowship should drive you and make you be part of that fellowship. And that takes us to the next level. If you do not attend these fellowships, then probably the reason, the purpose of the fellowship is one, not good for you, not right for you, or you actually don't understand that there is a reason for attending that fellowship. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I'm not in Facebook by choice. I'm also trying to actually walk out of, uh, uh, not walk out, to decrease how much I, I'm engaging myself in the, in the internet. And internet means everything that uses internet. And this is why I've realized you can fellowship virtually with so many people you don't know, people who don't know you. You admire them. You even think that they are your mentors. You even call them your mentors. And they actually don't know you. You, you, you use a lot of time, hours and hours, with those people or their materials. You in, in, always interact with their materials and those things. And you have no people for real fellowship with the people. People who matter to you. Like for me, people who matter to me is my wife and my daughters. I need them. They need me. I have to create time for them. Because it is them that matter most to me that, and anything good about me affects them directly. Anything bad about me affects them as well. If I, if I needed help, the first people to arrive at the scene will be my family. So I need to create time. I need to create time for my friends. People who are important because of what I explained earlier. I need to create time for them. And I realize most of my time is going to this internet thing, social media, Facebook. And I realize this is not healthy for my life, for my fellowship. Let me tell you. Let me throw a challenge to all of us. How many like fasting? Fasting, I mean, going without food because you want to have time with the Lord. You like, I'm not saying you do it, but you like. It's easier that way. Let me see. Hiya. Are we at MCCU? You people don't like uh, MCC. You, you don't like fasting. Okay, how many do actually fast? Or you have ever fasted? Oh, okay, so that's a better question, eh? can see the answer. Now, let me tell you. Let me, let me give, give you this challenge. The next one week, fast the internet. Shut the Facebook, WhatsApp, everything about internet. Don't go there. Try only two days. See how you struggle. Two days only. I'm actually telling you, if you are struggling to do it, then it means it's, really, it's, a, it's a very strong thing on you. And try to use that time now to fellowship with the people. Try. You'd have spent two hours on Facebook. Now think of a brother or a sister. You can actually visit them and tell them, I just want to hang around you. Let's talk. Let's fellowship. On. You don't even need to tell them. Just hang around them. And if they try to take you to internet, tell them, ah, no, 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 wait, we need time to talk. Forget about that. See how, see how that will affect you and how it will affect your relationship with other people. Challenge. You try. 
Praise the Lord. Time is almost done. Let me, let me finish by saying, by talking about, uh, just mention about the place. The place, like service, me, happens here. Uh, Bible study, where you agree. Every fellowship has a location and a place. And that, that location, that place is very important. The moment that location or that uh, place is not honored, honored in respect of the purpose, and the purpose is to have the fellowship, then the fellowship is destroyed. If people don't like MPH because, oh, it's not nice, and therefore they will not come for the service, the whole purpose of having the fellowship is destroyed. So the venue is very important. Venue is very important even on how you do your personal devotion. Your personal devotion is highly affected by the venue you choose. The fellowship also is affected by the venue. And so you must agree and accept that the place and the location that people have, or rather have agreed, is the location that you yourself also will choose to be there so that fellowship can take place. And let me conclude by asking the question, what kills fellowship? And here we're talking of good fellowship. The fellowship that we've talked about. You know? You see the Bible, Paul talking, it's very amazing how he's putting it. Verse 16, where we read, If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. You know? It will not, for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the ear was a human being, let's assume you are the ear of MCCU, and therefore you don't want to come to the fellowship today. So people are not here. You see that the analogy Paul is using. So let's now take it literally. Let's say you are the nose of MCCU, and you don't come for the service. Hapa, hapa the ammonia gas ikiachwa huku, hakuna mtu atasikia kuna kuna harufu mbaya. Kwa sababu the, the nose is gone, is not available. The feet. You know, if you, if you look at it literally, you can imagine of a fellowship that doesn't have its feet because its feet walked away. What kind of a fellowship is that? A lame fellowship, right? A fellowship doesn't have eyes because the eyes were not comfortable. They left. So the fellowship is blind. I'm just thinking about it. So it's good to ask, what is my place? What is my place so that I don't fail my fellowship? One of the reasons why people fail or what kills fellowship is when people just walk out. And there are many reasons why people would walk out. People would walk out because they are not treated well. Somebody spoke something unpleasant to them. I was in a fellowship last night somewhere, and the person who was speaking said, if you, if you are offended by your own sister, your own blood sister, or your own blood brother, you should actually rejoice for three main reasons. One, the fact that you, your brother and your sister can conflict with you means they are alive, they are not dead. So you have a living brother, you have a living brother, sister. That's number one. Number two, the fact that they can actually offend, uh, uh, offend you, that means you may learn something from them. Maybe they will correct you. Number three, the fact that they have the audacity of offending you and conflicting with you it shows that they really value your relationship and your friendship that they know even after they offend you, the relationship will continue. I like that. Let us learn not to be offend, not to walk out of fellowship because people offended us. As long as you are walking, living with the people, you'll be offended by people. How many know that? As long as you are walking and living with the people, you'll be offended by them. Let me see how many believe that. Why then would you walk out because somebody has offended you? And you already know that. Actually, if you don't want to be offended, 
this sounds harsh. Just don't live with people. Actually, don't live with living things. Hata ukienda kuchunga ngombe, kuna ngombe atakuoffend. Wachungaji mko hapa. Ngombe anaenda kufanya tabia mbaya huko. Mbuzi ndio huyo amevuka kwa shamba ya mtu. They will offend you as long as a living thing. So maybe you go and stay with the dead things. You know dead things. Those are those ones will not offend you because they are just dead. So don't walk out on a fellowship. Don't walk out because somebody failed you, because somebody mistreated you. Because you are because your ex-boyfriend and your ex uh, girlfriend is in that fellowship, you would go. Atukimwona unasikianga tu yak. And therefore the fellowship is yak because of him or her. No, 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 no. That's, that is not a good attitude for a believer to have. I don't have time to give you stories. Praise the Lord. So don't walk out because somebody has, has mistreated you. Because if you do that, then you will miss the whole point of, of fellowship. Also, because there is no love. And here love means you have to love what you're doing. If you're in a ministry, if you're in a fellowship like this one, you must actually love it. You must love the people you're working with, working with, and people who are doing things together with. You must carry the burdens of other people. If you don't, then you'll be like a politician. You know the reason why politicians like doing what they do is because they don't mind about people. They mind just about themselves. If, if, if politicians were carrying the burden of, of Kenyans as their own, this nation would be a first world country. But they scandal things. We are always hearing of scandals and scandals. The other thing that kills fellowship is disobedience to God. Sin is one of the biggest factors that kill fellowships. It's the biggest enemy of godly fellowships. You know, under sin, there will be unforgiveness, there will be hatred. You know? There will be lack of understanding people. And sin will also, of course, remove you from the, the spiritual unity that is in the fellowship. It destroys that. So sin is terrible. Sin is bad. Sin is the only thing that makes God to turn away from us. Sin. Imagine. A sin who kill, has killed even fellowship, even ministries have been killed by sin. Sexual sin, stealing, lying, cheating, taking advantage of people, you know, and just being there superficially without being concerned about the work of God, without being concerned about the people around you, you know, just being there for the sake of duty, you know, and so you live a very mechanical life, a mechanical worship leader, a mechanical uh, coordinator, a mechanical uh, preacher, a mechanical, everything is mechanical, there's no, there's no life in it. That is what sin does. Takes away life from a ministry. Used to, used, used to bless people, like the dance team here. They dance, they bless us. Once sin creeps into this team, they will dance and will not, will, we will not be blessed by them. Because sin takes life out of people. And finally, it is the wrong motivation. Actually, this is not final. I will have one more. It's the wrong motivation. When you focus on the wrong thing, why are you in that fellowship? Is it for the glamour? You know? Are you there because of the benefits that comes with being there? You can get into a ministry because the ministry is always serving here and you're always in front of people and you like being in front of people. And so you become a celeb. People know you. There's nothing wrong by, with people knowing you. 
But there's something terribly wrong of serving God or serving people so that people may know you. You know, mis misplaced priorities. You know, selfish drives. And those are the people, once their, their expectations are not met, they quit. Because they had the wrong motivation. They came to the fellowship because they wanted to be chosen to be leaders. And then leadership goes to somebody they think is not capable enough. They walk out. They start saying, ah, hata wa viongozi. Hata, I don't think even they think. They look, uh, they don't understand this thing. Me, I don't want to be led by such people who have no understanding. The problem is that people don't have understanding. The problem is that your motivation is wrong. And you are killing the fellowship because of that. And others because of they don't want accountability. I told you, I tell my pastor, whenever I am out of, I'm not going to church, I tell him. That's accountability. If you don't want to be told and asked, where, where were you? Why are you not coming? You know, people, you ask members of my Bible study, why are you not coming? And they, are, they answer back to you, should I come every day? I mean, what do you expect of us? We expect you to come. You are a member of this fellowship. We meet every, every week once. So come. Don't ask me, should I come every day? You should because you are a member of this fellowship. May the Lord help us. So because of, because of, you know, people don't want to be accountable. People don't want to be responsible. You know, there are those who don't want to come the day the people are elected, electing new leaders because they don't want to be leaders. They don't want to be responsible. In one of the CUs, because of the semester, the semester is a bit, uh, the number of students in school are very few. They wanted to do away with every CU program. No service, no prayers, no, no, no fellowship, nothing. And actually, I actually realized because they don't want to be responsible. The people were in com on campus that time. They don't want to be responsible. They don't want to be accountable. They don't want to be uh, entrusted the work of leading these fellowships and these services and all these uh, fellowships, I mean, activities of the CU. And I remember I sent somebody to them and told them, that cannot work. There must be fellowship. As long as you're on campus, there there be fellowship, there there be Sunday service. Praise the Lord. My time is up. I want to finish by this. Look for a fellowship. Work and commit yourself to that fellowship. Commit yourself to a fellowship. Get some people around you who can actually talk about you when you're not there. People who can actually write your CV. Get into a ministry. Serve the Lord in that ministry. Be in that Bible study. Be an active participant of the Bible study. Fellowship with the people. That is what it's all about. Being in the church. Being in Christ. As the Bible has told us today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for reminding us of, of the importance of fellowship, O oh God, among believers. And you know the greatest fellowship ever existed is the fellowship between you, Father, and your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And in the same breath, under the same grace, Heavenly Father, we fellowship with your Spirit, fellowship with you, we fellowship with your Son. And in Christ Jesus, we are one body, as your word has reminded us, and we fellowship with each other in the body of Christ. Help us, Lord, forgive us where we have failed in this regard. May you quicken us and remind us, Lord, anytime we forget because we are weak, we always forget, Lord. Remind us to be actively involved in fellowships, even as your word has stipulated, and every fellowship that will glorify your name and that will bless your people. I pray for this fellowship. I pray for this Christian union. May you bless them. May you honor them, Father. May you remember them, O oh God, according to your word. May you remember your promises upon this Christian union. May you touch them with another touch of grace, renewal, and revival that comes from your presence, Heavenly Father. 
And I want to pray, Father, for those in our midst who have various needs. And I want, if you have a need, just raise up your hand. Any prayer that you want God to hear, any issue you want to present before God, just lift up your hand as I pray. Father, these needs, I want to present them before you. There is nothing that is difficult before you. You are the almighty God. You are the God who calls things that are not as if they are. And today we speak to these situations, to these circumstances, to the needs these dear ones have, oh God. And we speak an answer. We speak a solution. We speak a way out. We speak a breakthrough. We speak a healing, oh God. We speak a providence from your throne. This morning, as you show your glory and your power in the lives of these dear ones, oh God, touch those bodies that are sick. Touch those families and those relationships, oh God. Those situations that need your divine intervention. May your grace be released now upon my brother, upon my sister, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we receive our blessing. We receive our miracles because you have promised to hear us whenever we call. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. And let us pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you for this hour. Father, it is all about your plans, Lord, not us. For many are the plans of the human heart, but your will prevail. You are the one who establishes your plans. And Father, in our hearts, O oh Lord, today as we are seated here, Lord, we need an awareness, Lord, full detail and account, Father, of everything concerning focus. Give us the wisdom that comes from you, O oh Lord, and the knowledge, O oh Lord, to understand everything, Lord. Composure is all we desire, and understanding is all we desire, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Na kwanza, ningependa waji introduce. Waji introduce. And they will tell us one challenge they have faced and one achievement in focus. In focus. They tell us about their name. And then tell us one achievement and one challenge. Very fast, because time pia hiko kwetu. Imeenda kwengine. Okay. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is your day, actually, uh, because you are the owners of Focus. <clears throat> and just maybe just to, to, put it, to put it across to us that uh, you are the main builders of Focus Kenya. Uh, that's why it's called Fellowship of Christian Unions and not of Fellowship of Staffs. And even for us to join Focus, like me, I'm a staff right now. For me to become a member of Focus, I had to register. Because Focus is a student body or student-led ministry. So it is your day. You are the owners of Focus, and that's why we are here this morning. And my name is Paul Mochie Ignatius. I'm born again. Uh, I served in Focus. <clears throat> of course, we are the owners, and also we take a role in leadership. I served in Focus when I was a student. I was the chairman of Chuka Christian Union but also I doubled up to regional, uh, and it is called DARSEC, uh, that is Regional uh, Student Executive Committee, and I was the chair, but also I tripled up to become the NASEC, that is National Student Executive uh, Committee, whereby I also served as the chair. But also this time, God so fit, I become the STEM staff for the two CEUs, that is this CEU and Chiromo. So, and uh, you ask about the challenge and one achievement. Allow me just to bring it down to us. Maybe one of the achievements that I really enjoy when I remember focus. <clears throat> uh, when I was a student, let me, not, let me just say when I was a student uh, in those days, it is the ability uh, to see that people are growing in theological uh, depth at that point because we had a lot of doctrinal issues as when I was the chairman at that point. And I remember that is the best time that actually we introduced uh, Best P and it gained root in the Christian Union, whereby people were taught on how to do a self-exposition on various topics in the Bible and how to do justice to Scripture. Because I myself, I was a heretic preacher. I usually found me when I was a first year. 
I could take a verse and run with it and preach fire. But at the same time, I've, I've murdered the scripture, I've done injustice, I've actually even disorganized all the theological rules for biblical interpretation. But when I came to focus, the programs themselves, I, I accepted them, they were so rich. And one of the achievements is when I saw it also happening in the Christian Union. One of the challenges also that I faced when I was also a student leader is balancing. Balancing between being a Christian leader, but also at the same time as a student. It's very easy for one to forget that actually one of, the reason why you joined Focus is because you are called to become a student first. But I thank God that, that uh, I had people around me who noticed and uh, they gave me some of the good advices on how to do some good balancing of the same. Sorry for, I think I've really explained. Praise the Lord. Amen. And is it morning still? All right. My name is Salome Jorobe. I'm born again. Christ is Lord. I am a STEM staff. I work with KTTC Gigiri. And I do what Josephine, who is your former STEM staff, used to do with STEM administration. Um, and I schooled at Upper Kabete campus. So this may not be the very first time I'm coming here. I've been here for an AGM when Seth Joko was handing over. Um, one of the challenges that I have faced or say I've ever faced, uh, possibly I'll talk about it as a staff, as a STEM staff. I've, I've served, this is my second term that's ending in STEM. I got a supplementary. Um, the, 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 one of the challenges I faced is when I was in Western Kenya and I was trying to establish relationships. We've just been told about fellowship today. Trying to establish relationships and I thought I was very good at interacting with people uh, only to be proven, you know, wrong in some way that I actually had to get to a new place and learn people learn the way they do things before now I start even bringing my new ideas of how helpful they could be in the CU, in the CU I was working with. That is, I was working with Kibabi University Christian Union before I came to KTTC. And so I faced the challenge of having to establish new relationships and had, having had to trust myself for the personality I am and then that becoming a frustration uh, and one of the achievements I would say is having with, 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 with of course, with the, with the leaders that I worked with in Kiba B, having managed to establish a brothers and sisters fellowship, I think that for me is, is a highlight. Yes. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, let me start with my challenge. Um, my biggest, one of the biggest challenges I've, I've, I've faced is as work, as I, as I start with focus, is when I meet students um, who ask me uh, what is focus. And uh, uh, they, they don't understand focus. Oh, and I meet others who ask questions like, uh, uh, do we really need focus? That becomes a very serious challenge. And this is because it always reminds me that I need to do a lot of work to make people understand what is focus. And it makes me also know that uh, there are gaps in terms of understanding who focus is. Uh, because when we don't understand uh, who uh, focus is, then we may not even be able to work well with the focus. And that is actually one of the reasons we have this, this panel, so that we make it clear or at least to help us understand what is all about focus. That's my, my biggest challenge. Uh, my, my biggest uh, success is when I see people I've worked with uh, in uh, students, and uh, we work together, they finish campus, we work together even after campus, they get married, and we're still working together, and I see the fruit of the, the, the work that focus has put in that student. That encourages me a lot. I have had a number of them, in fact, a few have bested their wedding. They actually call me to, to best them. And it, 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 it makes me, you know, it thrills me when I see such kind of a success 
and that is going all the way even to marriage. That is my biggest of, of them. Thank you, thank you. And that biggest challenge is being posed back to you. And our question is, what is focus? Now in terms now you are supposed to highlight on the vision, mission, objectives, the tagline of focus, and also you can give us the core values for the focus. The biggest challenge, back to you. Mm. Um, we, how long are we here? So that um, our members may, may, may know how long we are going to wait before we break. Um, I think it's important we let them know how long we're here. Yeah, for about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, Yeah. good. Um, focus is, a, is an acronym, Fellowship of Christian Unions. So we are a fellowship of CUs. So focus is not an entity out there. You are focus because MCCU is part of that fellowship. Is when you to come together to fellowship. So fel a focus is a fellowship of CUs. And we are all over in this country. Ev oh, every university, uh, public university, uh, I think almost all of them, and most of the uh, private universities, colleges also, we are there. So focus is a fellowship. We put together, we come together with, uh, as, as CUs, and we do a number of things. We have, uh, we have, three, we have three main, three main uh, stakeholders of focus. Number one are the students. You are the, you are the biggest section of focus fraternity. Probably 98%. If we are to count, you are, you are about 98%. Then we have about 1.7 or 8 of the, the remainder. Those are associates. So when you finish campus, you go out there to the uh, job market to become an associate of focus. And that's where we encourage you through the VUCA Fit uh, sessions, you actually attend and understand what does that mean. It means just making sure that wherever you go, you're in touch with focus, and we have many associate branches. <coughs> Last night, I was in my Chaco's associate branch uh, dinner where associates were, were gathering together in the name of focus. So that's what we mean by we have associates of focus. The third one is the staff, what we call the secretariat. The people you find in, uh, in uh, Kasarani, the STEM you see here, the STEM staff you see here, the CMFs, and the office workers that you meet at focus when you come. Those are the three main stakeholders of focus. Basically, we exist for students. In fact, one of our core values is student-centered. That's why in our National Governing Council, National Governing Council, there are five students who sit to make decisions. Actually, I'm being correct, there are seven. They sit there to make decisions about focus. Why? It's about them. Focus is the fellowship of CUs. CUs are made up of students, so they must sit in the National Governing Council. In the regional councils, we have regional councils. We have five students who sit there also to make decisions. So that is one of the main agenda of focus, to be student-centered. Anytime we are making or deciding to do anything as focus, a secretariat, we must have students sit in that um, deliberation, and they also give their contribution because we are student-centered. Another core value is integrity. We value integrity. We, we teach, we train, we speak, and we do our best to live it. Integrity. The other one is excellence. We try to do our best so that we can, be, we can excel. We can also model students in excellence, in managing everything. The way we manage events, activities, meetings, everything. We want to, be, to, to excel. And uh, I've said uh, um, student-centered, excellence, integrity, the other one is uh, teamwork. We believe in teamwork, and that's why we are very keen in uh, leadership teams, in, uh, in the CEOs. That's why we have leadership training, because we want to train those teams so that they can work together. 
and and so that basically that is what fo focus is, are, is about and there's the final final one which is faithfulness we want to be faithful to the scriptures uh, we want to be true to the word of god to the spirit of the word we, we we there are some students who have come to us who have told us former students now associates they tell us where it not for focus our seed would have turned into a cult and even today we can tell you for sure there are seals we have battled because the spirit of cult had already entered in those seals where people are greeting each other in tongues you know preaching each other in, in tongues you know something which is out of this world but we we god has been helping us and we thank god that we have tried and he's been helping us to be faithful to the to the scriptures so that is basically uh, what uh, focus is about. I don't know if anybody wants to say something else. Maybe, maybe just to continue with the importance, maybe someone may ask why focus then? I think sometimes because we have been hearing about focus for, for the word for the year, uh, third year, I've been hearing about focus. And maybe the issue is about putting all these things together to make sense. And this reminds me of a story of a guy who was actually had gone for an interview to be, to be ordained as a pastor. And he was told just to give the story of the good samaritan and the guy went forward to give the story of actually like every story a, a part of a story from the bible he had everything taken from the bible i don't have time to read the story because i have it but he took some bits from the scriptures just to make them fit to become the story of the good samaritan but in the case he had missed the point he had actually given everything concerning the bible that he knew about the bible and sometimes that's actually what it is with us. We, I know we know about focus, but the issue is putting it all together to make sense to someone. Like I know you have been asked. Maybe someone has come to your room and asked you, by the way, you usually tell us you are focused. So what does it mean to be focused? But my another second question is, now why focus? I think sometimes it's Emerson who says that sometimes people become so accustomed to seeing the stars that even nowadays we don't go out and be hover because we have been used to them. And sometimes that's what has happened. That we have become accustomed to focus, hearing about focus, and even forget the greater need and the importance and the benefit we are receiving from focus. Number one, imagine this. Imagine going to a sea that had no structures, no structures at all, no advisory committee, no policies, like financial, so the chairman can actually decide to upgrade himself. You know, no AGM, the chairman has a more tool, let me just use 3,000 just to buy a new suit. You know, just to make the chairman become the chairman. Because there are no policies involved. No advisory committees, no accountability, imagine that's such a case. But also let us go to maybe theological depth. Imagine there are no programs like best fee that actually teaches you to do justice to scripture. Someone will just wake up in the morning and say, I, when Uzziah died, I saw the Lord lifted. You know, and he tells you now, your Uzziah must die. <clears throat> and yet, without knowledge that they're doing very great injustices to the scripture. And I'm rushing because, um, but also imagine a CEO that doesn't have, you know, no, no, no training when it comes to reaching out to other students. They have no initiatives to have a seeker sensitive service, service here on a run from morning to 4 p.m. We have such kind of CUs, whereby their service starts in the morning at seven, it ends at four. And that's what right now you have seen, because you have, you have been accustomed to a two hour service. But imagine going to a CU, and it's not actually when I was the regional chair, <laughs> one of our CUs, their, CUs, their service used to start at eight, it will end at 2.30. And it is Kirosho all through. They start with Kirosho. After Kirosho, they come again. The man of God who is now the, 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 the CU chairman will come again, give a sermon for one hour, sit down. Now introduce the man of God, the speaker who, was in, who, had, who had been come down to come. <laughs> so you can imagine such kind of scenario. Because number one, we are students. But, but imagine going to such kind of scenario where, where the, the, the CU is run like a local church. You know, it really brings issues up. But also imagine going to a CU where the leaders have no capacity. They have no skills. Listen to me, you can never run a CU with tanks. You can't. You need leadership skills. Whereby the leaders have no integrity. You need to be trained. 
And that's where, as staff, we come in handy. But this is the point I want you to remember. So that now you don't see the three of us as focus. You are focus. In fact, you have employed us. You have employed you. Listen, the budget of focus right now is, it is 45 million. 45 M, right? And you as students all over the country, more than 45 million students all together, 45,000, right? 45,000 students all over the country, your target 2.5. But the focus budget is 45 million. But you as students are supposed to give 2.5. Listen to me. All this 45 is supposed to be spent on reaching you, equipping you, you know, and training you, and doing all things just to make sure that our vision remains. Whether you're equipping students, just reaching them with the gospel and changing, the, changing their lives also to transform not only their, their campus, not only their surroundings, but also the nations they are going to reach in. So one thing I'm trying to say is that focus is you, but you employ us so that now we can also train you and advise you and work with you so that now we, we make sure that our vision remains to change the world. Thank you. Let me just add something. Um, there is a story we've been told about Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria doesn't have a very strong... Uh, movement like focus in terms of managing CUs. On a Sunday like this in Nigeria, in a, in a Nigerian university, you'll meet uh, maybe 10 over 10 services like this one. And some of them is this room, the other ones is the next room, and everybody is blaring their, their music and their sound the highest possible. So you go to that university, it's so chaotic. Focus has actually helped our campuses not to have such scenario. We work with the administration, of our university, actually through the chaplaincy, those who have them, and we actually have the university to ensure that there is order in the, in the university. We, otherwise, we will find ourselves, like Nigeria, where we are so chaotic on Sunday, because all of us come from different I mean, uh, uh, churches, denominations, I should say. And if everyone was to bring their church in, on campus, you can imagine what, how the campus would look, look like on Sunday. That's why we have the Christian union. It's a union. Union means my denomination, his denomination, her denomination, united, unite, union with fellowship on a Sunday service. And that's why we train leaders so that they don't lead the service the way they lead their church. What is your church, denomination, where you come from? Congoya. What is the name of the church? The Revelation of Healing. Did you hear that, that name? That name? The revelation of healing. What is your church? The name of your church? Sitam. Uh, Abundant grace. grace. And I come from Pepper. Now, if he comes from, uh, if he brings the way of leadership <laughs> of the revelation of healing, <laughs> and, and I bring Pepper, bring Sitam, and abundance of grace, you see the chaos. We have to actually harmonize all that, and focus is there to ensure that it's happening. That's why you see there is decorum when you're leading our service so that everybody is catered for. So the person who is from PCA doesn't feel hurt by the way the things are being done here. The person who is from Revelation of Healy doesn't feel shortchanged that there is no much uh, uh, spirit of God in the service. We, we, we train. That is part of what we do to ensure that there is, there is sobriety, there is order in the services, in our CUs, so that the, the union, the C Christian union, can run and everybody is blessed. And maybe to just wrap it up, a little bit of vision, uh, Covalis and all that, is that the big picture is Christian students and associates, because when we live here, we become associates, impacting institutions of higher learning. I know it's been projected, impacting institutions of higher learning, church, and society. And so we reach and equip students for effective Christian living. Simple. So think about it and think about yourself and where God has positioned you as a member of this Christian union and all the effort that the CU puts to equip you. So are you being an effective Christian and are you impactful in this institution in your church back at home? 
and where you go for attachment or where you go to work after this place. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, without description of what focus is, it is clear that there is a symbiotic relationship between, between focus and the main campus Christian Union and any other Christian Union in the, in the country. Uh, and we thank God for that. And I do believe that that big, cha big challenge will not come from us. For now we are enlightened concerning focus. We know the tagline. We know about the core values. And we know about the vision, mission, all about the focus. And it's all about student-centered. And we thank God for that. And maybe to, to ask, and our dear Salome will answer this question. I've heard about Ezra and I've heard about commission. Thank God I participated in commission 2017, but not Ezra. To Ezra. kuna zengine lakini Ezra na commission na uliza kuna vitu zengine mnafanya other things which you spearhead other activities so apart from commission, Ezra uh, and commission conference uh, well yes we do leadership trainings I'd say maybe I think just from our objectives which are our six it, it, that will bring it out more clearly and one of our objective is evangelism and so apart from reaching out we as the christian unions we are also equipped on how to effectively reach out and so that's one of our mandate two is we do discipleship part of discipleship is issues scripture engagement and the theological depth and that's why we have programs like best p which he has mentioned best p is not best people it's bible exposition self-training program we have natural class we have uh, i was just telling paul school of ministry which of course may not you know be so loud in the bigger focus but then when you come down to the christian union you see it and we do leadership development so through trainings especially so when when a new leadership comes on board we have we have them trained yes we help to uh, improve on structures and that's why when when things are keeping on changing you you might hear your stem staff telling you that hey we need to review maybe your constitution or maybe we need to get a financial policy so our work for instance as a staff is to actually facilitate that yes um when it so that's actually organizational effectiveness which is one of our six objectives and um Yes, I think less. Yeah. Yes, we also have a partnership. Yes. Also one of the areas that we have, we train CUs to do partnership, and I know MCO even has a, a partnership policy. Uh, how do you partner when, with who and why? Because not everybody who comes here, they want to partner with you, will actually benefit the, the Christian Union. And so we train and we do that. And that's one of the core uh, areas that we, we, we have as, 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 as focus on the Christian unions. And we, we are also doing it as, a, as an organization with the churches and organizations um, across this country. Nani Hayo too. Nani Hayo. If you have not uh, participated in Ezra and commission, please do. Ukiongeza vukafit na Ezra vitu zengine. And just to final... National Leadership Summit. Uh, which is coming. Actually, National Leadership Summit is coming uh, next, next, next year, January, mm -hmm. third to seventh January, we have National Leadership Summit. If you are a leader in the CU, whatever capacity, Bible study, uh, class, uh, uh, year fellowships, whichever leadership position you hold, you are part of that leadership summit that is coming next year, January, and we'll be getting you more information. But prepare yourselves. I'm sure th some of you could be aware of that already. Capacity. Can I say something about Hatua? This, this, this. Oh, okay. Good. We, we, uh, we were enlightened about Hatua 
na mimi najua hatua ni kutoka from one step to another uh, from one step kuchukua hatua and tulielezwa hapa vitu vingi tumekuwa lighten na watu about hatua and pia tunafanya campaign about it lakini ni vizuri kwenda kwa chungu ujue ni api ya koko kwa chungu